All right. Been you, Cameron, the last day, huh? Well, I don't think they'll yell at me for stealing secrets anymore. Oh, actually, let's walk down this way. These were all partitioned off in offices for various things. At one point, the magazine was down here. They've had other things in the documentation down here. This would be a chip lab over here. They moved it. More dark corridors. Guess I should have got the deluxe camera. Now, see what comes out, comes out. So I have equipment over there for working on circuit boards and such. And here we're in the factory slash warehouse. This used to be production lines and immediate storage. I actually had oh, three production lines going. Chip lab in there. Some more of that lab up there. Up the stairs is the new QA department. It'll be locked. It's a big place. But now you get to take what you can. I just thought about doing this this morning. It wasn't like I made big plans for uh, rooms to be opened or anything. Yeah. Big, uh, big warehouse back there. Some more small warehouses. And good roller skating, too, I suppose.
closing up shop for the last time. I have mine too. You're going to be at the what's his name, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Mine's the one with you're bigger than yours, babe. Yours is bigger than mine? My cat, yeah. yeah. My cat, that's <laughs> Ooh, competition. Yes. <laughs> Carolyn, all you do is pop the label there and pull that off. Carolyn. And paste it down. Bye. Start cleaning out a while ago. All the partitions and furniture pretty much gone. The records are in those files. <laughs> hey, he's the bodyguard. He's Point the bodyguard. <laughs> get out, get out. This is my lab equipment. I'm not taking any lab equipment. All I'm stealing are images today. I'm pulling the truck up tomorrow. Get the Henley uh, floppy. Oh, yeah. That is an important feature. <laughs> I want to take the last look at the heavy floppy anymore. <laughs> uh, I think I think I want to have to fall past them. Like like yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while you have those days. <laughs> well, let's see. This if it doesn't need to be mentioned as engineering. We have a logic analyzer. Some CD32 stuff. Really look at that virtual reality. More CD32. Parts are in back there. Twelve hundreds. More CD32. Hey, CD32 has been the big thing. Microscopes. You ever work on these tiny, tiny little boards with all kinds of surface mount on them? You want a microscope. Don't let that magnifying glass fool you. Yes, we actually use Amigas in our work. Okay. Well, might as well do the whole thing. The machine shop disconnects over to the mechanical design group. Nice milling machine. Would look great in my garage. Everything. This is locked, so. Yeah, I wasn't too worried about the parts room. Everything that counts. <laughs> Lab monkeys live back there. <laughs> this is it. Work on here and a bunch 
bunch of other stuff. It's just a prototype board. Memory, slots, VRAM modules. There's a development system. That's an EPO. The other development system, Lab Monkey. Lots of junk from previous eras. Another AAA system. Hmm. Wonder what was wrong with that one. Software six pack, this was called. There's at least one left. And oh, Dave, taking the video, eh? Wow, you made a mess. This is the cleanest I've ever seen it. What are you no, talking no, about? No, no, no. There's least amount of junk. It's definitely oh. not the cleanest. Okay. I usually kept things all, it, it, mm -hmm. it, though cluttered, um, organized enough that I could find everything I needed, you know, within a minute or two. Uh, it's called caching. However, in the process of finding the stuff I actually want to keep, <laughs> everything else is just being thrown on the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the floor is the to be thrown out pile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fish. Everything that was they, they, I've been to there, Molly. Is this legal? I don't know. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? Give away secrets? <laughs> what? Get the wall. Oh, the wall. Yeah. That's yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, I thought about that day. Bring the mine in. I really did. Yeah, well. Jeez. This is like hard to film here, but good idea. It's kind of a history of software in pictograms. She comes home like Peter dinner. Some of these guys were at the bachelor party last night. <laughs> Speak. Well, there's nothing here but hardware guys. I mean, uh, administrator, excuse me. Frank was there. Alan's office. When we had a secretary, she lived here. Chip designers. Oh, there's still some chip designers sitting here. Probably talking to their headhunters or something. He's working. The last guy in the building to be working. <laughs> this is for my, my next job. Oh. <laughs> mm, gotta get that. Mm. Well, nobody's home. Let's move on. are off and no one's home. It's just the computer room.
this is Cadmium, Apollo Workstations, Mentor Software. Sort of the old way of doing things, the budgetary requirements being what they have been. This is, uh, or was the layout, board layout room. Mike sat there, fish sat over there. This is George's mentor cubicle. It's not really supposed to be here. He kind of took it over when his, when his office filled up. It is most impressive. A normal one looks something like this. This is George's real office. Somewhere in here, or probably a similar amount at home, is my Isobus book. Table. Are you leaving, Dave? Hey, there's George. The world? Yeah, I, I filmed your office. Uh oh. <laughs> be used as evidence against you in a court of law. I'm afraid of. Still running, Dave? Still running. Uh, Is that good or bad? That's all. That's why you can't touch. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I want to make a movie today anyway. No, yeah, just so that everyone who uh, I think you're taking an inventory of all the equipment. <laughs> and you come in at night like ninjas following the tape, like you come down this way and turn left, steal this laser printer. I described exactly that action yesterday that Greg Vito did. <laughs> hey, that wall used to be part of my office. <laughs> Gonna add sound? This has got sound on it. It's in full st I made beer for my lost baby's uh, birth. <laughs> this was the least I could do. Oh well. That seems to be about it for now. Check in in a bit. <laughs> that should definitely be recorded for posterity. Yeah, I, you know, I waited for all these years, I finally broke down and I'm doing it. <laughs> uh huh. Finally decided I've been here long enough, I deserve something. I'm gonna take a couple of ramp chips. <laughs> the last day of Pompeii. <laughs> <laughs> so are you in or out? I'm uh, in for two weeks. That's what I heard. 
we do a gala, huh? Try that gig for a while. Dr. V. <laughs> It is the only place I ever take my sunglasses off. Are you allowed to film in the I guess we'll find out. Clearance rights. He's been videotaping coming out of Hi, how are you? Wow. <laughs> All kinds of people who used to work here. Oh, don't ruin this really cool. Hey, This is high technology we're talking about. The best that Japan can offer. Any comments for the archives? Uh, we're fucked. <laughs> Official comments. You can quote us. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not the Reuters. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Jeff has all the right ad numbers if you want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my <wedding>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mark, you're right. You're right. <laughs> but you're still an asshole. <laughs> We <laughs> might actually publish this. Supposed to be at the gym or something? Pretty well, how are you? Uh, Frank's was better than yours. Well, what did Frank do? I waved, I waved the low. That too. you wonder, but... Uh, well, many Commodoreans now are enjoying the bliss of pure being. You mean you're a bum? Yes, I am. Yeah, it means I'm a bum. Employment, no job, no hey, money. Dr. Mo, there you go. Yeah. Oh, that's a procedure. You're still getting unemployment. Yeah. I like that idea, yes. Yeah. His summertime plans. My plan is to lay by the pool, build hey, my decks. We know what Jeff's gonna do. <laughs> He's living so good. Yep. I'd like to, this message goes out to Commodoreans everywhere. Wherever you are, we love you. Okay, we're back in business here. <laughs> take take two. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit clapped, right? <laughs> Talk amongst <laughs> yourselves. I'll we'll give you a topic. <laughs> Commodore is neither a comma nor a door. <laughs> Sad state the liquor been treating you good, huh? Sad state of affairs. So much talent, so much uh, energy wasted. Yep. Victory. Defeat snatched from the jaws of victory. <laughs> Sick of That's the word. Where are you headed? 
Texas. I don't know yet. Uh, no, uh, Maybe Texas. I also wanted to check with you. Uh, I've been talking to a uh, headhunter in Arizona. Arizona. Looking for multimedia people, uh, new set-top box type stuff. Uh, in her his video chat says, do you mind if I pass your name along? Feel free. Okay. In fact, uh, I got right. Say to Maddie Ali. Yeah. Right now. This is great, Dave. Uh, I, now, how often do I have to tell Maddie off? You know, it's like, Maddie. Are you a general asshole, or is there anything specific? Well, I think you're just a general asshole. Andy. No, unfortunately, Maddie, I don't work for you. Ah. ah. Any other parting comments? <laughs> Do y'all have anything to say to Maddie? No, I don't. I heard you. Taxes are high. I wish I could drive the company to the ground and live off the fucking interest of the money I made doing it. Yeah, we're as Anything to say to Maddie Ali? <laughs> Thank you for the new job. Uh, send me a card from Leavenworth. <laughs> uh, what are the live sounds like in Pennsylvania? Uh, this is a documentary. It's, uh, freedom of the press. That's why it's uh, largely unedited and really bad. And <laughs> so Dave, if I bring the uh, tractor trailer up to the shipping dock on Friday, can you get me some stuff? <laughs> You get the tractor trailer, we'll get the stuff. I'm sure we could come up with some kind of an arrangement. <laughs> okay, we're recording. Is that recording? Yeah, it is. There's the red light. And why are I'm actually in the show? Yes, there it is. Tim. Tim, that's Tim in the evening, too. Yeah. Point outside is dark. Anything to say to Maddie Ali? In my entire life, I have never wished ill upon a person in many before. <laughs> my entire life. Lots of people I've disliked, some people I've extremely disliked. If Maddie Ali was standing in front of a bus coming in, bound down the air, I would just look the other way. Wouldn't make any attempt to yell, jump. Mm -hmm. 
I'm certainly not going to push him out of the way. Yeah. Not even going to let him know. Uh -huh. no, and we all know how nice you are. The last moment before bankruptcy story when all the CIL people were running up and down the hall uh, furiously and they came in with a uh, folder to uh, Hawk Tan's office in a blank check and said, uh, you better get to the bank quick because it's only open for half an hour. And uh, apparently they've gotten all of next week's payroll in cash at the plant. <laughs> so we'll get paid next week, good this week. <laughs> This, this has a history behind it. There used to be someone named Joe Mecca. Joe Mecca, yes. The, uh, um, what was his uh, title? Facilities manager, something like that. But <laughs> highfalutin stuff. <laughs> Any, anyway, we, uh, we decided to, uh... Well, he put these speed bumps into the parking lot, and there were these really big speed bumps. And we all hated them, and they wouldn't take we're them We're talking out. huge speed bumps. I had nightmares about these speed bumps. <laughs> I had anxiety dreams about these speed bumps. And Joe also had the only reserved parking space in the entire company, and being a modest guy, it was spot number one. <laughs> so, so one night around 2 a.m., uh, Keith and I and, and another guy named Mike Sins, uh, who got married yesterday, we kind of went out there. And, well, I had a little fun with blue can of spray paint. Masked off his parking spot. Did a very neat job. Very, very good job. Uh, spray painted his, uh, the lines blue and put up a handicapped parking sign. sign. Excellent job. Professional stuff. Could not tell the difference. He tools in the, mo in the morning. Jeez! What the fuck? <laughs> oh man, he was so pissed. He called around all the departments to try to figure out who did it. And, uh, oh man, and you have never seen the building facilities people fix something faster than this man. <laughs> got that line painted yellow. By again. the time I got in in the morning, it had already been painted orange. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to use the spray can of spray can again tonight. Sean. Room, room. Can you say, born to be wild? <laughs> wild. To <laughs> be wild, daddy. Live that. Can you say, love me, love my hog? Love me, daddy. Hog. I'm not sure Scott will appreciate pretzels. Oh. Ooh. Okay, I want to get this shirt. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. On the computer. You can mail order to Bryce, no, 800 number to Bryce to get him. You're kidding. Yeah, no, I'm 800 not number? Everybody's going to sign. He's going to, he put it out on the internet too. <laughs> oh, okay, so he's not limiting the commodore. No. 
That's make it a good. business oh, actually, opportunity. I think it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like my film. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're gonna do? You're gonna do it and sell it? I'm gonna. Uh, <laughs> Turn around. You look at your tires. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It looks like your, your rooms are sitting. I know. I know. I work for a tough boss when I'm like coming. You had the perfect timing. I know. We have Bryce here. Were they just all seen Bryce yet? Bryce is off of the hardware. That's from Curtis and Bryce. Where'd you get it? Uh, last time. Okay. I do a little bit here and there every day. Oh, really? Bugs? I know you're so good. Yeah. I knew a lot. I knew a lot. Yeah, I knew a lot. See, my question is, hey, Mom. Hi. Oh, I'm going to make a tank. How are you? Oh, I'm going to make a tank. How are you? How are you? I'm going to make a tank. How are you? I'm going to make a tank. How are you? I'm going to make a tank. I'm going to make a tank. I'm going to make a tank. I'm going to make a it's a major dollar. Yeah, I've got a really good time. Dale Lefkowitz. I got enough for you. You're doing it. Yes, we are. You're doing it. 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 You're doing it
the Commodore crew. This is the 1309 Scalp Level Road. Somebody read the note. Read the signatures in the okay. Read off the signatures in the note. I'm sure, shut up. That's not going to work. It says it's from, it's from Greg Miller, Spencer Shanson, Martin Hunt, Martin Telfer, Kathy Godfrey, Dale Luck, Leo Schwab, and John Wiederhern at 3DO. Take the hammer. There's cars yeah, that right there. Like Which one? This no, no, no. You gotta hold the hammer. I can see a damn thing. Stay right here, okay? Here, okay. yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Who's driving this car right here? Copper yo yo. Kind of the back of the Actually, All I see is a bunch of white yeah, legs. Oh, yeah? <laughs> this would be great. Okay. So they have like low light thing. Yeah, not low enough, though. Like I said, protect the eyewear. <laughs> Wait, I can beat that. That's a very good Getting all this stuff. I'm trying. Hey, everybody back up, back up. Hey, careful, careful. That's it. Kill Bryce's driver. Wow. Uh, 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 has anyone pulled the press for this? Uh, uh, no, this is depressing enough. Uh, uh, press any key. This should have been done in daylight. Oh, well. You need like some sort of music, like Johnny Cash's yeah, right. yeah. Ring of Fire or something yeah, like that. Wagner was the one who did it. It's ergonomic. It's nicely warped. Here you go, Chris. Hold this one. Oh, okay. Oh. You got a chainsaw? You got a chainsaw? No, no. Here we go. Come on, Michelle. Wait a minute. I need a new F2 key. Lucky seven. Hey, Greg. Okay, watch it. Hey, watch out. Hey, watch out. Yeah, broken driver. Wouldn't it be funny if the car got too flat? Wheel drive. What did you do? Did you just turn around the car? Lock the rear wheels. Here goes that. Eight, nine. No, Peter hasn't done one. Come on, Peter. Where's the hammer? Here's the hammer. I'm getting all this friends. I'm trying. It's damn dark. In the way. Where? I can't see anything there. Don't hit me. 
of the camera hitting in the, uh, the close up. Yeah. Long as you're oh, right. oh, oh, Which key are you after now? Okay, so oh, away. Back up. Hey, 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 hey. Set or something. No, no, no. He's not going to burn well hanging up. Work with me here, people. I'll Oh, good. Many a hot foot. <laughs> Wait, light is crushed! Light is crushed! Oh, 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 burn, little brown scumbag! <laughs> burn, burn! I toast! I toast! I toast! I toast! I toast! Wait, I need vodka to do this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
wait, wait, wait. You want to say something about Alan? What? Near my guy. Why are you being so Sorry, he's dead. Maddie is dead. I'm melting! <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> actually more Jeff's fault than anyone's though. Let's well, not put you on the spot or anything. I mean, the film is rolling. Time is money. I, I came into Commodore and I had interviewed with everyone but Jeff Boyer. And I came in that day and I was told, that, and Jeff Boyer was told that I was working for Jeff Boyer. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one and only person who hadn't talked to me. So that's kind of a... Uh, much to his uh, chagrin. Gee, did anyone call Jeff Boyer about this? No, shit. We didn't call no, Boyer. No, that's right. Oh my God. No problem. I didn't. There must Someone have been some subconscious block. I even talked oh to Boyer. Right Denver, 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 Denver,
I was the designated keep us out of trouble person. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, we have this little, this little prank on you. I've been known for trouble. Yeah. Well, no. 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 Weren't you hurt? Weren't you complaining? If I was part of the story. Still that little asphalt uh, top bed that said, I believe this is yours. Yes, it yes. is. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait a minute. I hadn't heard that story. <laughs> Were you there or were you? No, no, no. I, I painted his, his space blue. That was Mecca. That was Mecca. That was Mecca. But Bob Greg, somebody sent him a large chunk of one of the oh, the yes. <laughs> with a little post it on it that said, I believe this is yours. Oh, <laughs> man. So it was yes. the Space Monsters. If I thought of it, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. We always thought it was you. I, I, got, I got blamed for so much stuff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and both of you did. He had, nothing, <laughs> to, he had nothing to do with the firecrackers against with all the, 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 the mobile furniture and, and engineering when they were about to like re do it all. I, I didn't have anything to do with that either. Okay, that was really familiar. Okay, back to Denver Divcon. Okay, back to Denver Divcon. Denver Divcon. So Jeff 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 Jeff
insisted that I was going to have a star role. So you can get a girl. He had the big part, but I was going to have <laughs> the major supporting role. Was, I was yeah, going to be the living with the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> and I had an umbrella. She and climbs so, up onto a cadenza. And we all march there. across this cadenza. <laughs> and I get to the end, and it didn't look that high when you're standing <laughs> on the floor. And I'm up there, and it's like... Oh, shit! <laughs> I think I have an umbrella. <laughs> and we had Leo Schwab as a blocker. Yes! Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, was, everyone so, was following it along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I get to the other credence and I think, yeah. I'm gonna break my neck if I jump <laughs> off here. Uh, the only hope is to, I've had enough alcohol, I'll just jump off and roll. So I jumped off and ended up on my butt and rolled backwards. That was okay. And then we blew up. Oh, Lord, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lord yeah. came by and hit the magic wand. Yes. Uh, and the balloon was held overhead. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Confetti was well everywhere. Well, yeah. All over the hotel. Well, the Eshwab was the last to die. Yes. Yeah. All over the hotel. And then we went and apologized to the staff, and they said, it's worth it. We clean up every bit. It's worth it all. Don't help us. This was great. So, so then we tried to, there's a couple of kind of footnotes to the story. We tried to take the show on the road. We tried to go to the GVP thing. To the GVP private party. Right, right. We had to say GVP with Linda Lemmings in. Gail, Gail decided to protest. She stood in front of this silly bouncer person, took her invitation out, which she did have an invitation, yes. to the private yeah. party, ripped it up into little confetti, and threw it at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and then, just because he'd been a relatively good sport about it, he didn't like totally ban us from the meeting level. We tried to give Sherb the wand that we had used, just kind of as, an, as a memento, and he said, "Gee, thanks," and he threw it in the garbage. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. Bite by bite had this very, oh, very <laughs> handsome present. By the way, gorgeous. Man. Man. Please read them all. <laughs> gorgeous man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely His gorgeous. His name is Scott Peterson. Scott Peterson. He is yes, probably is. the most difficult person to deal with. He also is your basic Adonis, okay? <laughs> <laughs> really. This nice is not my body. story. Really? <laughs> this is not my story. <laughs> he showed up. We had this discussion. Okay, wait a minute. He showed up for set up one time from one of the trade shows we did in, in uh, Las Vegas. We did a, the software show for the dealers. He showed up for set up wearing a very, 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 very short pair. You weren't there. I'm sorry. <laughs> short pair of shorts. Management loses again. <laughs> and, and like nothing from there down and just nice tight t-shirt. And I had a real tough time. <laughs> Concentrating on my job that day. Yeah. So we had this discussion about how difficult he was to deal with because he was always bad mouthing Commodore and bad mouthing Amiga and all these things that we now can admit that were true. That he said. Anyway, you somebody to call said Henry to me. And talk to him for hours on end. Someone said to me, Scott is good for absolutely nothing. And I said that's not true. And I had to remember executive. I had this office with this big long couch, and I said. That's not true. Scott has value, and Lauren said to me, what? And I said, we can shoot him and stuff him and sit him on the end of the couch. He made great scenery. <laughs> So we're, we're going to tell the speed bump story. So Commodore installed these speed bumps. And they were these really, really tall speed bumps. And they installed them, and they were too tall. And like that. Every... Oh, that's <laughs> right. There was an example. Yeah. Why did they install the speed no, wait, bumps? Wait, wait, wait. They, all, they also were every 20 feet, too. <laughs> they installed them every 20 feet, and they decided that, well, maybe, maybe it would be a better idea if we had a few less speed bumps. Well, so they took the speed bumps out. And the snow plows had a little bit to do with it, too. That's true. And then they, the, That's the, I kept saying, why worry? You know, the first three snowstorms aren't going to be any speed. They put them back. <laughs> so, yeah, but then they dug holes and they poured macadam into them and made speed bumps that don't come out. Right. So Gail and Henry Rubin, who was the chief operating officer at the time, and Jeff Porter were in the in his office, and you have to tell me I'm telling the story right. And Gail says something like, "Well, oh, don't worry about the speed bumps. First time the snow plows come by." 
it'll all be out. And Henry says, well, and then some idiot will probably spend perfectly good money putting them back in. <laughs> <laughs> some idiot did. <laughs> and it happened. So they had taken these speed belts out and put some them back in. Some idiot named Joe Mecca did it again. And they'd taken them out and put them back in several times. So I wrote this little memo. And uh, come or letterhead. Show. Letterhead to all employees from the facilities department. Subject, speed bump rotation planned for early July. <laughs> Starting on Monday, July 3rd, the facilities department will begin daily reconfiguration and expansion of the important speed bump network at the Westchester facility. Work will be arranged to maximize the disruption and discomfort to all employees. Each day, the executive committee will meet to determine pleasing geometric shapes for the day's speed bumps. The current record for changing the bump network is two hours. This time should drop into 230 minutes before the planned national championships. Points are gained at the nationals for lowering employee morale, delay to critical engineering projects, and destruction to suspension components. The Commodore team is expecting stiff competition from a group of former Pennsylvania Department of Transportation pothole diggers. <laughs> Committee Chairman Robert Gregg says that employees have been, quote, laughing at our efforts to strictly enforce the new totalitarian parking lot regulations, and quote, it is impossible to overemphasize the importance of parking enforcement. Uh, that second one was a real quote. <laughs> Mr. Gregg is on the statement with you, on the record with the statement, quote, if I had my way, there would be 10 more speed bumps in the park. <laughs> Employees attempting to evade the bumps by parking out front will have their tires slashed. <laughs> a newly designed stealth paint will be used to conceal the location of bumps to prevent naughty employees from slowing down. In August, existing white lines in the front lot will be further widened to reduce available parking space. And starting in September, the death penalty will be used to deter violations of 15 mile an hour speed limit. Alright, Bryce. Now, do you want to talk about bypassing speed bumps prior to the point where the tank traps were installed. <laughs> I don't know, for that and we need how, teeth. <laughs> and how many people had to be pulled out of the mud when they tried to bypass the speed bumps and got stuck in the swamps adjoining Lake Mecca, which no. wasn't there yet, but the eye is pretty cool anyway. We need the Munich's guys for that because they were the ones who... Is it Augie? Augie. 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 Did I pull out you or, or I Keith? I went around them. I pulled out Keith, Keith and the tow truck pulled out you, right? Oh, no, the other way around. Oh, okay. <laughs> I went around them, but I never got stuck either. But I have another... Uh, no, but the point is, oh. why were the speed bumps installed in the first no, no, place? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> Your name came up when I talked to, to facilities about this. Why these speed bumps? Well, there are certain engineers... Bryce was always very popular with facilities and security. <laughs> oh, they yeah, love, love Bryce. Bryce. In fact, best. security loved Bryce's CDs but so the, much that they took a few home with them. The best <laughs> story about facilities is when we were moving in Cats, and I had hired this sweet little secretary from the South named Patsy. And I was out of town, and the guys were moving stuff up from, I think, from a developer's conference or something, putting it into the storage area in Cats, and the facilities guys just came and were shoving it in the room. And Patsy said, this isn't good enough. And I don't know what to do about it. So a southern timid woman, and that she was, and then she thought, what would Gail do if she were here? She threw them out of the department. <laughs> she said, if you're not going to do it right, we'll find somebody who will. Get out of here. And they left. <laughs> yes. So you have a story about speed bumps? I have another footnote to the story about speed bumps. <laughs> <laughs> Some person, <clears throat> when the A500 was having reliability problems due to sockets for Agnes, spread the rumor on the net that it was due to the fact that the trucks <laughs> were <Hello. laughs> <laughs> We're bouncing over the speed bumps, loosening the chips. <laughs> and in fact, in Amiga World, one month, out appears in, the, in this column that's on like the second page, the, these little, you know, news one notes. news yeah. notes, right? Um, and one of them said, you know, the new speed bumps at Commodore are responsible for these chips getting loose, and they're far too high for Commodore engineers in their low sprung sprung <laughs> low sprung <laughs> sports cars yeah. to drive over. Yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you. And, and yeah. one, I remember Bryce and I one night 
when the snow was falling and it was one of the earlier incarnations of the speed bumps, we said, Ooh, we know how to get rid of the speed bumps. And when it removed all the snow from right in front of the speed bumps, the snow plows would take them out. And lo and behold, the snow plows did. Oh but did I still you tell don't yeah, know who sent that hunk of asphalt to Bob Greg with a note that said, I believe this is yours. I believe this is yours. Did you tell the story about painting Mecca's fragging space? Hey, we have been told that one. Huh? Could it have been Bowen? You know, now it that you could have been Bowen. No. I mean, now that I mentioned that story. He would never have done that. I, it was it an intercompany mail? No. Yes. I, it it's was It's a little you. busy. It, <laughs> 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 he doesn't remember he was stoned. <laughs> no, he was asked for it. It's Joe Um, During this speed bump set of episodes, <laughs> Bob Gregg was standing outside talking with the person from the paving company, discussing ways to reconfigure the speed bumps. And I pull up, I believe, with Bryce and Randall in my car, of course, accelerating to 60 miles an hour in front of each speed bump. <laughs> and he's standing there watching. He tries these sound effects. <laughs> and he's standing there watching it like. You know, just very, very, uh, you know, kind of not very happy about this, you know, because we're sort of making a mockery of his <laughs> precious <laughs> speed bumps. <laughs> and so we, we um, get out of the car and I, we're loading a couple boxes in or something, and he's, you know, standing there glow, glaring at us. And we get back in the car and I peel out. <laughs> <laughs> and and zoom right past him <laughs> and the engineer or the uh, paving person and uh, he was not amused <laughs> and I believe the next day they put in the speed bumps four inches higher <laughs> thank you August. Oh, we had to go know, yes. one. and Gail's back entrance was painted such a beautiful shade of blue that walking up that stairwell was like having a near death experience <laughs> <laughs> it woke you up in the morning, Bob. We were a multimedia department. We had to be vibrant. <laughs> Did Mel set up it shocked the hell out of Bob, Greg, and Joe Mecca. Joe Mecca thought I'd gone nuts. And that was worth it all by colors? itself. I picked the colors. I thought Mel had a bad day. Uh, I mean, uh, it was... I picked the colors. You're trying to but say it was, it was worth it. all Bismol pink, which is what the rest of the stereos were oh. Oh. But, No, it was worth it. It was worth it that. because it shocked the hell out of Mecca. I mean, Mecca never recovered. It was, <laughs> it was not military green. He did not know how to cope <laughs> Tell, tell, yeah. tell your stories about Mecca, the things Mecca kept on his desk. Uh, well, Mecca oh, kept like... the 357 Magnum. You got well acquainted with that. And the grenade. Yeah. And the grenade. A grenade. This guy was this major military nut. <laughs> but just because of this, we like... thought he was a him. Marine. We caused the engineering department and the facilities department obviously didn't get along. <laughs> <laughs> we caused more regulations. This aforementioned speed bump memo caused the new regulation that you couldn't post anything on a bulletin board inside Commodore without first getting approval from personnel. It said, the memo, however, said you can't post anything on an official notice board. Oh, yeah. So, so we, we immediately put up unofficial an unofficial notice, notice board. board. <laughs> and As a matter of fact, I created only. an official unofficial <laughs> notice board in CATS. <laughs> yes, yes. And in I was not going to have everything that was posted in my department go through personnel. It was that simple. Oh, uh, okay, over in engineering, I put up a sign. I just printed out on a little yellow sheet of paper with a laser printer, unofficial notice board, and taped it to the wall. About two weeks later, they came through and painted it, and they carefully painted around my little sign, and <laughs> thus making it permanent. And to this very... This story is about the famous Henry Rubin pep talk. Back in the dark days of 2.0, back when it was still called 1.4, software engineers were working nearly around the clock in order to get the job done. But the number of hours worked increases with every retelling of the story. We, but we did sleep at work. People were sleeping at work, there were cots Under at tables, work. If I remember correctly. 
management was supplying free frozen dinners, free pet stressels, free drinks, everything that they could to get us to stay over. And things were going marvelously well, but Henry decided that we need a little motivation. <laughs> so he says, I guess to Andy, Andy, we yep. need to have a meeting of all the software people. Let's get them all together and, and, said, and rally the troops around the flag. And I said to him, Henry, I don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> and he said, Andy, I'm glad you agreed. Now let's do it. <laughs> okay, Henry, I said. So Henry was explaining to us why it was important to win one for the giver and to go for the gold. And the light is at the end of the tunnel and there were more cliches thrown <laughs> at me. Oh no, it is. it's darkest before and the dawn. Before it it is always darkest and before the dawn. And, and we need an effort, effort like, like we've never seen, seen before. before. Again. Again. <laughs> Which, for the whole 2.04 project, basically became the saying. We we made an we, effort. We've forgotten the fish. The fish stinks from the head first, which but may the, or may not be appropriate to these situations. The pinnacle of the meeting was after he had managed to stun us all into complete and utter silence. We were so appalled at what we were hearing. He was surprised to see that there was no reaction. We were all jaws hanging open. We didn't know what to say. He Trying said, not to laugh. I, I yes. take your silence as a vote of commitment. <laughs> yes, yes. We came out of that meeting so utterly depressed and demoralized. It wasn't even funny. I think it must have been funny now. Oh, yes. I just say that, that I think everyone in the maybe community found out what Henry was really like when at the Washington DevCon when someone who was near and dear to my heart was introducing Dr. Rubin for his opening remarks. <laughs> Happened to mention the phrase being Henry. The <laughs> <laughs> porter came to DevCon and Dr. Rubin was at that time head of all the technical parts of uh, Commodore. He was the chief operating officer. So he back was in the good old days. Back in the good old days. <laughs> he was essentially going up in DevCon and Gail introduced him. And in her opening remarks to introduce Dr. Rubin, she happened to mention the phrase being Henry, which we all took to know was. You're screwed. You're basically screwed. Whatever it was you wanted to do, you thought was right, you're basically screwed. You've just been Henry. She used this phrase that Henry had never heard before <laughs> to introduce him. Porter let out a visible gasp. <laughs> all the engineers in the front row tried to crawl underneath their chairs. We all turned blue. And I am all various shades of blue. And she got out of it. She didn't I, know I, I, I exactly was exactly what I was doing. I was standing with Henry, and he was saying, "What does she mean by that?" Uh -huh. what does she mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> I know she exactly what I was doing. Gail, Gail essentially explained it uh, before Henry got up to speak. As you know, essentially, you're walking down the hallway, and you have your entire agenda for the day plotted out, and you meet up with with Dr. Rubin, and he has something else in mind, and all of a sudden, you you've done a 180, and you're going in the opposite absolute opposite direction, but you're still being incredibly productive. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gail, Gail, told it better, Gail told it better than that. She said that, that you were going off, wandering around, doing stuff, and then Henry put you right on the right path, and you were zooming off yes. full speed. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yes. was, <laughs> I didn't know what you complete. meant by it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I got away with it, didn't I? Yeah. That was at, at that point, I met Henry. At that point, when she finished remember the explanation, all those engineers in the front row that we were just talking about were gagging. <laughs> <laughs> those of us in the back of the room who could escape were out of there because we were laughing yes. so damn hard that we were going to embarrass somebody. <laughs> ourselves. You mean Mr. Porter was, was just upset smiling. about this? No, no, he didn't, oh, know. He he was didn't know. He didn't know what I was going to say. Neither did anybody else. And he knew what being Henry death. really meant. I'm standing up there laughing, watching inside, watching all these faces panic. You know? <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> Mr. Porter, the man. One more time. A One more time. Moment. In Frankfurt at the German Developers Conference, <laughs> thousands of Germans are sitting there, and Jeff Porter says, and then I did this, and I got my pee-pee wet. <laughs> <laughs> and you could hear the entire room going, was is not the pee-pee? Ich kann das nicht verstehen. Was ist das? Was ist I forget about that. Which is why he was father <laughs> hardware. <laughs> I was mother <laughs> software. <laughs>
<laughs> Geeks. Geeks. Yes, the geek. No, 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 no. It's Jeff Frank said, pounding on the door. Those fucking Unix geeks. <laughs> Did you tell the story of the resignation letter? Um, okay, there's the uh, there's of course the resignation letter, which um, which was faxed to uh, uh, Mehdi Ali, and uh, uh, the story goes um, originally when Ned came on. Um, like several months after he came on, he was uh, he had to lay off some of the Unix employees, including uh, Richard Buck and David Ballman and, and some others. Um, they were we had some knowledge something was going to happen fairly serious. Uh, for days we kept asking him, "What's up? How's it going, Ned? Tell us what's up." Um, I don't know what's happening. He'd always say. Um, what was it? Friday came around, and uh, we're asking what's happening. We wanted to all go to SIGGRAPH, I believe, and he was saying, no, you have to be here this day. Why? If we're going to get fired, we want to go to SIGGRAPH. If we're not going to get fired, we want to go to SIGGRAPH. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, he said, no, you better be here. Um, uh, we were all here. He went had lunch during the, we're all pacing. He had lunch, came in, had lunch, came back immediately after lunch, um, told the people that were laid off that they were laid off and they had five minutes to clean up and walk out the door. Um, fairly rude. Um, no, uh, 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 quickly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, the people that were left were uh, Screnta, Ditto, and myself. We stayed on, uh, finished the Unix tape, um, I guess three, four months later, and uh, then resigned with two minutes' notice, faxing uh, uh, my resignation letter to Mehdi Ali, who, uh, who immediately got it because, uh, what's his name? The, uh, the, uh, who, who was in charge of engineering at that point? Don't know. Sydney's. Sydney's got, oh. got a call um, basically five minutes after that. Who the yes. fuck is this geek? <laughs> yeah. so, I want to get my number. So uh, uh, we had interesting uh, um, incidents with, um, uh, uh, with security. Uh, of course, uh, sort of struggling with uh, with angst at that time uh, uh, against security and the speed bumps um, <laughs> and parking tickets. We, uh, <laughs> rounded up all the parking tickets um, and uh, put them into a, a roll, much like a thing of toilet paper. Uh, and uh, stuck it on the wall and asked uh, Mecca to uh, buy more absorbent pieces of paper. <laughs> green pieces of paper. You had to have one of these um, if, you came, if you came into the building or left the building with any sort of equipment. They were uh, uh, force-fed you by uh, whoever the <laughs> Dottie. receptionist Dottie. was. Dottie. Dottie. Um, <laughs> although she had no clue on what, what you were taking, whether it was uh, a pencil or a, 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 large, uh, a large machine, she couldn't tell the difference. Uh, notable uh, uh, property passes. I had a property pass for CBM Vax. <laughs> <laughs> Hit it. I, now you're going again. Yeah. I had a property pass for one 747 airplane. Uh, uh, I, I had a property pass for a Cray MP, just in case uh, Commodore ever got one, I could leave with it. <laughs> Uh, when I heard about Bryce getting a property pass for a 747, I couldn't believe it, so I tried it. So I got a property pass for three 747s. Oh, no. I still have a blank property pass. I have a property pass for one of the Commodore forklifts. During uh, my last move, Commodore was nice enough to give me empty boxes. I unfortunately had to get a property pass for the empty boxes. <laughs> I am another victim of the empty box property pass. <laughs> We have three victims of the empty property <laughs> the empty box property pass. That was I have a property pass for one dozen donuts. <laughs> and what did you really want a property pass for, Mr. Nesbitt? I don't actually remember. You wanted to have individual property passes for each donut <laughs> and one for the box. 
I was with Jeff Bruett when they made him get a property pass for some goldfish in a plastic bag. <laughs> hearsay, hearsay. And, and he asked them if that was to keep them from being confused with the Commodore goldfish. <laughs> I got a, had to get a property pass for two pieces of wood. <laughs> I used to carry my CD player in and out, a portable CD player. Each time I came in, I had to have a property pass filled out for it coming in. No one ever checked with it coming out. I have 50. <laughs> they forced me to get a property pass for these donuts. I really wanted to just bring them in, and they didn't believe my excuse. I claimed we were going to smuggle them out through the sewage system. <laughs> I didn't get a property pass. My hard drive is still in the building. <laughs> so I brought the stereo in and got a property pass and took it out and they didn't retrieve the property pass. So I brought it in again and they insisted on a property pass. I tried to claim that it was a gift to Commodore. I was going to leave it here. I never wanted it back, but this wasn't good enough. I had to have a property pass. So I filled out one for, quote, one electronic item. <laughs> Bryce understands part of it. <laughs> and if something's broken, you can like go to him and he'll like kind of straighten it out. But he like chickened out a long time ago and we've had to deal with it ourselves lately. Uh, this is getting like really stupid. <laughs> I forget the quantity, but I had some, I had a property pass for some speed bumps. <laughs> Over here, okay. I had this property pass and I brought it in and I had to get a property pass for the property pass. <laughs> this well, you is heard actually about the property a Pomodoro pass. property pass form. <laughs> Well, you heard about the property pass for one electronic item, which of course is like shopping spree. <laughs> the, this property pass was used to take out the prototype of the Amiga 3000 for its first public showing at no one else than Margaritas. <laughs> the problem with property passes was that it wasn't coming out that was the problem. You could walk out carrying something like this across the guard booth and they'd be like, good, good evening, yeah, bye. Uh, Coming in, I used to hide things, you know, so Dottie wouldn't see him. Dottie was the, the receptionist, so that she wouldn't see him. And I would be like walking across the hallway while she was talking on the phone, answering a call, and she'd say, stop. <laughs> she'd like see the little ball chair from. <laughs> I once came in carrying a bag full of wires. <laughs> and Dottie saw the bag and insisted I get a property pass for them. I want my speed thumbs back. <laughs> They're in a receivership case. <laughs> so I quit Commodore over three years ago. Today, I went to Commodore and signed a property pass to get these mugs out. <laughs>
So he gave me a ride in the Commodore, you know, not long after I became known as the resident Commodore person. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, later. After I later. wrecked the red truck, <laughs> I had the green van. Okay, which says like daily local news or some bullshit on the side of it. I do remember this yes, yes. And I drove this thing for like to a year and didn't have any trouble. But then unfortunately the, I forget which, and whatever the cops that like do, uh, the, uh, the mall, they like caught me going down Ship Road in this fine green van, no license, uh, no registration, uh, no shirts, uh, tags uh, that were like uh, off of a, a, another vehicle, like a, a pretty red pickup truck. <laughs> and uh, needless to say, they uh, became slightly upset about this, took me to court, and like snatched my license for a couple months. This was the green van. Uh, eventually, we parked the green van behind the FCC shed. <laughs> okay, the green van sat behind the FCC shed for maybe a year, <laughs> gradually and gently deteriorated. <laughs> now, my personal belief is that the FCC guys took out their latent hostilities against engineering on the van with hammers and crowbars and picks and balls. But. <clears throat> About a year later, there wasn't much left of the green van. I had to get a friend of mine to tow it away. He didn't think it was worth very much, and the valuable items that I'd left in it for a year were, like, not worth very much. <laughs> a man who refused to work. <laughs> a man who, when faced with the concept of upgrading his Amiga Pass 1986, just plain and re flat refused. Oh, yes, story. the man who would not run 2.0. Now, this even though been, even though he wrote part of it, this would have been <laughs> fine for anyone else. Part of it. Yeah, this would have been fine anyone else, but Ray was a member of the OS team. <laughs> yes, a developer of the software who refuses to run it because. Quote, I don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> because, you see, when he rewrote his little part of it, it didn't work, and we had to fix it. <laughs> so, we decided to give this guy a little calling card indicating that maybe we don't really want you working around here anymore. <laughs> More specifically, uh, people that don't upgrade themselves will be taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> but the bottom line but, is... But, realize, he'd been worried about this for many, many, many months. And once, when someone went in and got a directory of a disk in his office. Uh, yeah, that was me. I, I needed to use his machine. And you know, I didn't think anything of it. So I got the key to his office, unlocked his 57 locks, <laughs> um, just carefully moved aside the trip wire, you know, and I turned on his machines. Now, and mind you, Andy was this person's huge. boss. Right. So Ray comes in you know, later that day, and says, my God, someone's been running my machines. I said, yeah, it was me. What'd you do? Oh, I don't know, I forget. And, you and know. He also went around to everyone's office and accused them of having tampered with his machines. Right. And that if, and if they didn't own up to what they had done to his machines, he would have to restore his, his hard disk from tape and lose a full weeks of week of work. The bottom line was, this guy was incredibly paranoid, and I guess the only sad footnote to this was, we proved him right. <laughs> <laughs> After we had all been blamed for tampering with his machine, when we hadn't done it, we decided to tamper with his machine. <laughs> First problem is, what do we do? So Bryce has the idea, let's make a 2.0 ROM that to all external appearances look like 1.3. This requires an incredible amount of re-engineering the old look of 1.3 back into the technology 2.0. So Bryce, with my help, works out the data file formats for all this stuff and creates a one of ROM that looks pretty darn close to the 1.3 system, even though it's 2.0 through and through. So we obtain the key to his office. We disable the trip wires. We're very careful. We know that he has this time log on his machine exactly when it's rebooted. We're very, very careful, and we upgrade his machine to 2.0. And in, uh, 
We also left little calling cards inside the machine. Little cards attached to chips inside the machine that said <laughs> things like, Welcome to the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> we upgraded him. The e is very easily upgradable. All you have to do is pop out a chip, insert a new one, and for permanency, solder it into place. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, just to make sure he couldn't put the old one back in, put a drill press through the center of it and present it to him as a keychain. <laughs> but Randall is getting ahead of the story. Uh, ahead of the story, yes. Yes, yeah, so we, we do this and it's we think it's perfect. So everybody in all of engineering knows about this story. Um, except, of course. Except, of course. I, all right, so yes. I took, had no official knowledge of this. I didn't want to hear about it. <laughs> this However, was well before Reagan, even. All, <laughs> the important thing was, because. the most important question was, how long would it take Ray to find this out? Now, no, remember, Ray was uh, what you would call uh, an anal retentive person. <laughs> everything had to be in its proper place, and it, everything had to be just right. And we'd been very, very careful. Bending the mouse cable just so. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a, a pool going, which is how long it would take Ray to discover. And so people would buy 15 minute slots from the time he came in to whenever. And so these sold out rapidly. This is a popular item. <laughs> <laughs> One senior manager was approached and asked to contribute a dollar to the pool. And his answer was, well, I don't disapprove of what you're doing, but I think I'd be going too far if I was to actually give you a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I got a phone call. I was Ray's roommate at the time. Another story all on itself. But Randall feels better now. <laughs> <laughs> Much better. <laughs> but I got this phone call at 10 a.m. or whatever it was. And I, of course, had not gone to work yet. And Ray was saying, someone's been in my office. Do you know who it, is, what, who it was? And well, since I didn't know everyone that had been in his office, <laughs> I said, no, Ray. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the art of deflection. <laughs> so, is, who was the winner of the pool? Well, the, the, the story, story has a lot more to it. <laughs> is uh, Ray goes into his office and he always closes his door because he doesn't like anyone else. But <laughs> <laughs> Randall and Dave are sitting by the microwave oven at a particular point during the day. We were? You were. Well, apparently Dave it wasn't Haney. Randall. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do know that when we, we came in, I asked Ray... Oh, excuse me. Dave Haney and Mike Sins. There you that go. makes much more oh, sense. Sorry. I was wondering what I was doing there. <laughs> You're right. That was, that was before <laughs> noon. Randall couldn't possibly have been in here. I usually get in at 10. Mike got in at about... Seven. Six. Four six. 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 Now, so when Dave, Ray wanted Dave, to get something Dave, from, like... Wildly early. Okay. Hi, Bryce. Hello. <laughs> Give me a back rub. <laughs> when Ray wanted to get something like a Coke from the, the cooler, he would open his door, close it behind him, and lock it, walk maybe three steps to where the Coke cooler was. He only had the office nearest the Coke machine. Get a Coke, go back to his office, unlock the door from the outside, walk in, close the door, slam. This is, of course, after he realized that his machine that we'd done something to his machine. No, that was no, before. Well, yeah. was before. All he yes. knew was that someone well, he had been something in his office. <laughs> right. So right. what do you do when there's a problem? You call security. <laughs> <laughs> so security sends up a guard and Ray says, I would like to make a report. And the guy says, Okay, what would you like to report? Somebody's been in my office. And is there anything missing? Uh not that I know of. <laughs> is there anything damaged? Uh not that I know of. <laughs> So I can't very well write anything. <laughs> and he was incensed at the security guards for not taking the report. <laughs> they didn't take it seriously. And then so he basically asked everybody in the office uh, who had been in his office, and since everyone denied it, Ray got very upset, slammed his door one final time, locked it, and walked out. Right. The biggest and, problem that that causes, all our bets were for that day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden, bets were open again for the second day. Right. And also, as people would be walking down the hall while he was still there, they'd walk down the hall, they'd look at each other, they'd both burst out <laughs> laughing, <laughs> without having said a word. <laughs> so Ray comes in the problem. next day and he does some more poking around and he finds out that our perpetrators had made one small mistake <laughs> with a <laughs> mild <laughs> date on a certain startup sequence needed to make the monitor monitor work correctly. But he still couldn't figure out what we had we had done. He knew we'd touched that file, but he couldn't figure out what we'd done to it. <laughs> oh, really, imagine this. Of all of the possible things that someone could do, would they create a clone version of 2.0 that looks just like 1.3 installed in your machine? Nah. So, Ray, being paranoid, discovers something's wrong with his hard drive, so he restores everything from tape and reboots Again. the system. And lo and behold, 
it comes up, not in monitor mode, but <laughs> in hybrid mode. So now he knows, and now the plot begins to unravel quickly, which is why I had hoped it would have happened a day earlier anyway. So. And, and the secretary, Joanne, was the t official timekeeper of the pool. Because <laughs> she could see Ray's office from her desk. One didn't need to see, of course, to get the time. Just That's to true. listen to the scream. Now, now, and the massive slam of the door. This, this is where Mr. Haney comes in. Mr. Haney and Mr. Sins were sitting next to the microwave oven. <laughs> and... <laughs> Breathe, Lamar's <laughs> back. Okay, I'm calm. <laughs> now, it's your part. <laughs> you gotta tell it. Okay, so you're sitting by the, the microwave oven, and Ray comes out of his office, and he slams the door, present, present, present. and the entire building shakes, and then they kind of calmly look up at the clock and say, Aw, oh, damn, I had 11.45. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Poole turned out to be none other, none other than my fan, Tally Fair, who, in a great act of generosity, bought everyone one piece of it. <laughs> End of story. Well, well there's well, a bit one, more to the story. One minor, one minor thing. Yes. Ray came, comes into my office and says, Do you know what they've done? Do you know what they've done? They've upgraded my machine. I said, Good. <laughs> they were very thorough, though. Bryce and others made sure that there were no 1.3 ROMs available anywhere in the building. We, we took the entire stock of 1.3 ROMs in the entire building and hid it. And, and Ray we, and it, finally did find one on some disused motherboard. Right, and, and someone presented Ray with the his old ROM. <laughs> the old drilled through it. Drilled through it. The other so, thing was, he, so he couldn't use it. The other thing that was that they had to upgrade his 2630 accelerator board with the Rev6 ROMs to be 2.0 compatible, which are in all aspects superior to the Rev4 ROMs except that they're 2.0 compatible. That's the only difference. Ray demanded his old revision ROMs back. And it tells you how clued in he there's was. There's one more final thing to this story. Epilogue. Epilogue. The day after he discovered that this all happened, he went to SIGGRAPH, he went to, SIGGRAPH to hunt for a job. He didn't go because Commodore sent him, though he tried really hard to get Commodore to send him. He tried him. to get engineering to send him. Yes. And what did he do when engineering wouldn't send him? He tried to get marketing to send them. He tried to get everyone in commerce to send them, even the janitor. <laughs> <laughs> but no one would send him, so he went on his own anyways to hunt for a job. And, well, while he was in SIGGRAPH, he was laid off. <laughs> by Federal Express, when they absolutely, positively have to be gone by 10.30 the next morning. <laughs> The first time I met George was around 1 a.m. as he was roller skating around the hallway as a Commodore. What Porter really hated was the wet footprints from the bathroom. <laughs> what was even worse was working late at night in engineering and finding George still in the bathroom. <laughs> Here we go. Well, I was walking down engineering row one day and I had a speg in my hand for one of the new chips, man. And Sherry, she was a VP of some. Well, she, she was, yeah, yeah, she comes up and says, yeah, QA, man, she's QA. <laughs> I said, I said uh, you know, can you tell me where I can find George Robbins? And I said, yes, yes, sure, I can show you. <laughs> uh, if you come with me, George is right back here, man. And, and there was a little, like, little partition, like, was like, the, the cubicle was like open a little bit. You could like look in and there was George in his sleeping bag. <laughs> and I said, Sherry, I'm sorry to tell you, uh, George is asleep, man. He, you know, he'll be up about one o'clock. You can talk to him then. But um, I don't think you want to wake him up right now. Thank you. And then we advanced to the regular men's room that was adjacent to the regular ladies' room, which probably would have mattered because it's like a lot bigger. Anyway, the regular men's room, regular <laughs> men's room. Okay, it was pretty decent, except for we've already spoken about these wet footprints leading from there into like living, living areas. Okay, and there the, the object was to determine you would like get yourself clean and dry and whatnot, and then how many paper towels would it take to soak up all the water on the floor? Okay, and they had these like nice little paper towel dispensers, like. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> you know, you're like you're working a half hour of this thing to get like the roll of paper towels down to pour up again so you can soak up all the water. So, yeah, you know, it was like really difficult. But it worked for like, I don't know, maybe two or three years. <laughs> <laughs> Just long enough to survive a Commodore, collect a little tiny paycheck, <laughs> the important part of life, and make these funny products like. 600, 1200, CD32. I don't know. And then we eventually grew up, rented an apartment off site, and uh, fell aid! <laughs> the first two. Go. So, this particular gullible guy came into my office one day <laughs> and said, Hey Bryce, would you download something from Vix? And I said, Sure, as soon as I get around to it. <laughs> and he made the mistake of saying, what's around to it? <laughs> so I said, why don't you go ask Keith? <laughs> oh, Kevin. Kevin. Go. Kevin said, around to it. Well, I had some last week, but I'm all out. And so Kevin James. sent him down to QA. Choi said, we're out square, we're out round to it, we may have a square one About this time, even he got suspicious. So he asked one more person, and that person finally clued him in as to what a round to it really was. <laughs>
and I'll update them from the old man with the power, with the vision, we control things with no reason, but the money, that we pay them to do nothing but corrupt it, and we value by the pockets with the ashes of a thousand wasted dreams. Not taking it from you. You just don't have a clue. Give in, all I give in to the bastards with the power, but the talent to the strong fits with the reason, but the ego can be gone without thinking. And I give in, you just stand up by the pockets. All I'm taking from the morons with the power, but no concept doing all this with no reason but their own fear of the people who create things that have made them far too wealthy. Like the pockets with the ashes of a thousand ruined lives. Not taking it, not taking it. Not taking it, not taking, not taking it, not taking, not taking it. Give in, all I give in to the shitheads with the power, but no conscience to destroy things with no reason, but their own free. Built the mansions, got the millions, by the people who have made them get off welfare, go to rehab, try to reconstruct their lives. Not gonna take it, not, not gonna take it, not, not gonna take it, not, not gonna take it. Take in, all I'm taking. Take in, all I'm taking. Take in, all I'm taking. Yeah. Why? Hell.